Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India topic is fural synthesis. So, uh, to begin with I think we have to justify why fural synthesis should be learned. Okay. Uh, obviously, uh, there are importance of the fural nuclei and where, uh, where they are found. They are found in quite a few of natural products like uh, fural steroids, viridines, uh, then quinones like furocumarins, many of you know soralin. Soralin is a uh, drug used for psoriasis. This is kind of a skin disease. Uh, skin disease that also contains a few run. Uh, so likewise, uh, there are quite a few uh, pharmaceuticals which also contain furan nucleus. Many of you probably know. Uh, one of them is uh, furosemitide. The other one uh, is uh, very widely used, uh, commercialized. Uh, uh, medicine called uh, ranitidine. How many of you know? Have you have you heard of ranitidine? It is a drug for, uh, used as an antacid, right? So I mean that means uh, uh, fural nuclei, uh, fural nuclei will have um, uh, medicinal uh, usefulness. Then of course uh, this synthetic usefulness for making other uh, natural products for containing furan. In addition, many of you know furan is one of the uh, least um, aromatic nuclei heterocyclic nuclei. So, uh, heterocyclic nucleus. So, uh, it can be uh, used for the synthesis of other heterocycles. So, consequently this, the, uh, this new, uh, synthesis of the fural nucleus is very important. One of the um, classical uh, ways to get to the fural nucleus is to convert uh, uh, let us say existing fural nucleus into a nucleus. For example, you have furfural. So, you can convert into bromofurfural. We are not talking about those kind of reactions of the furan to furan. What uh, today we will be talking about only the how to uh, construct the ring. Of course, concomitant with the uh, placement of the uh, different substituents at the right positions. So, that means our uh, discussion today would be limited to the on, only to the constructions of the uh, furan nucleus. Okay. As usual, if you go to the literature, you will find plenty of plenty of furan nucleus. So, what I will do today, actually what I have done in fact, I have grouped all this um, uh, synthesis uh, into uh, five categories. One of them of course, all of you know the, the uh, first one is the Paul Knorr, the second one uh, Feist uh, binary, Feist binary, Feist, Feist binary synthesis and third one. Uh, I will not name it, but uh, what I will say from uh, alkyne precursor, alkyne precursor, okay. alkyne precursors, the fourth one uh, likewise uh, is a basically methods uh, from uh, aline precursors, wh which are basically equivalent to the isomerizations or cyclizations. And the, the last category, uh, what could be the last category? The uh, last category could be miscellaneous. Miscellaneous. Uh, we will have quite a few depending on the time, we will talk about those. And deliberately, I have uh, omitted uh, there is a famous class called um, intramolecular Wittig reaction. Int you can, in, all of us know that double bond can be created by Wittig reaction. So, if you have an intramolecular version, you can also have a cyclic compound. So, I will just skip them uh, very quickly. All of you probably know uh, what is the first one. First one uh, requires uh, it is uh, like uh, 1,4 diketone, that is it, that is what you have to remember. 
that, uh, and uh, in this case let us say for example, if R is um, uh, tertiary butyl, so uh, you will get the corresponding uh, furan derivative uh, with tertiary butyl uh, as the starting material, uh, sorry as the uh, end product. So, uh, now also you have to know the catalyst here. What are the catalyst? The common, uh, so you have to mind it, the catalyst it you cannot uh, have a very strong catalyst, but you have to have mild catalyst and that to acidic catalyst. You can use HCl, uh, uh, you can use uh, PPA, you can use uh, PP uh, phosphorus pentoxide, uh, you can also use PPTS, right? PPTS is a pyridinium pyrotoluene sulfonates. So these are all mild, some of, most of them are mild, and HCl it can be made mild just by using the right uh, molarity. Uh, reason being, all of us know that furan nucleus also is susceptible to undergo polymerization in strong acidic medium. Okay. So this is a now I'll just give you one more example um, uh, to uh, clarify a point here. Let us say you have you have a diketone again. Now, if I treat this, uh, uh, should we be able to predict the reaction product? Uh, what would be the reaction product? Uh, if you look at, uh, it has a one four dicarbonyl functionality, right? At the same time, uh, you have an aromatic nucleus that is pyridine nucleus. So, many of you know uh, in, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, that is a possibility of intramolecular Friedel-Crafts reactions, right. So, but uh, so can you think of it? So, that means uh, there is a competition between intramolecular Friedel-Crafts reactions and the Paul Knot synthesis. So, which one do you think would be the um, favored one? In most cases, uh, in this case, uh, of course, all of us know the pyridine is a uh, nucleus with lesser nucleophilicity because of the presence of the nitrogen. So, obviously, the product that would be formed here is the one derived from the Paul Knot synthesis. Okay. So, likewise, now let me uh, uh, go to a uh, few variants of this. Um, uh, for example, <coughs> Uh, how do we uh, how do we convert this diol uh, into uh, what is a uh, furan? Uh, if you just basically uh, do the uh, oxidation co number counting, you'll find that it uh, it requires an oxidation. It requires an oxidation. That means uh, just uh, again a partial oxidation would Mm, uh, give rise to this aldehyde, this aldehyde, and if you have a kind of a sort of an isomerization, for example, mm, isomerization. So what you will see, uh, it is nothing but it is again equivalent to mm, uh, the corresponding one three diketone. Uh, sorry, one four one four diketone, right? So that means what you require is, uh, is an aldehyde. You don't have to have a, uh, two keto groups. Uh, the, Corresponding hydroxy would be perfectly all right, but if you have an inbuilt double bond, then automatically it goes to this um, product here. But uh, uh, so, in this case, uh, this has been uh, done with potassium dichromate and in, of course, uh, a bit of acid. So, eventually, you will go to the uh, compound to this, likewise, this. And uh, why we have been talking about this? Because the polymer synthesis is even today is used for synthesis of a very complex molecule. I will just give you one more example. Uh, this is little complex. Uh, the molecule has a cyclobutane, then it has uh, uh, several uh, silicon protecting group. Silicon protecting groups, all of us know TIPS is isopropyl, uh, TBS is uh, the butyl. Then um, also you know that um, PMB paramethoxybenzyl, then uh, uh, this has a the other substituent is a beta keto ester kind of thing, beta keto ester kind of thing. 
a substituent. Now, if you uh, treat this with an aldehyde, with an aldehyde, uh, which will be basically uh, um, an aldehyde obtained from glyceraldehyde and the protected form, and uh, solvent is methanol, and the um, uh, reagent, of course, as usual, is a weak catalyst. This is uh, uh, PPTS. Now, uh, you see, now this is such a complex molecule. Now, what is the, um, what, what is the possible uh, product? What is the possible furan product? So, you have to very first thing, what you have to uh, uh, find out the possible mode of reaction. What is the possible mode of reactions in the presence of, in the presence of um, PPTS? So, I uh, will not write the whole structure that means, these are all intact, these three are remaining intact. Okay. So, even uh, this portion also is remaining intact. So, now you can tell me uh, what is the possible reaction. No vehicle condensation, aldol condensation one of the finest the I mean fastest reactions of aldehyde ketones is the this aldol condensation. So, uh, what, what you will get you will get is a uh, aldol uh, kind of condensation with the aldehyde. Then you have uh, once you have this, this is the aldehyde carbon then what you have uh, two more carbon and then in the presence of methanol and uh, all of us know this acetonide breaks. So, you will have two OH groups, two OH groups here, right. So, this is the intermediate actually, it is not isolated. And then I guess uh, um, you must have found the resembles with the previous example. What was the previous example? You see, previous example was uh, if you partially oxidize this one, it is a ketone alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. So, what you see here, this is an alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde and then you have the fourth positions or the gamma position alpha beta gamma, gamma position is having a hydroxy group. So, it is uh, strongly resembling this uh, unit here and this unit here. So, this will actually that means uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, this will uh, form a uh, furan ring system that means the product would be I will just not write the full structure uh, you can make out the, uh, the structure would be Mm, this. this is a very uh, recent uh, article, recent article and um, so uh, rest of the things are ok as usual as before and the, all the protecting groups are uh, sur uh, surviving in this conditions this. So, that means, the, so they are all different kinds of the variants because we will know a lot of chem chemistry of carbonyl compounds this thing that thing. We can just uh, figure out um, how to uh, um, uh, modify the existing methods, but basic principle is that uh, it has to have an 1, 4 diketone system or it is corresponding isomers or something which can be readily converted to the 1 for diketones. Now, let me, um, let me give you one more example which happens to be pretty uh, interesting uh, as far as the yield is concerned. Suppose you have a ketone of this kind and then an epoxide. In this case uh, beta and gamma epoxide, gamma epoxide uh, epoxy, epoxy ketone and uh, this could be a very uh, simple undergraduate problem. You take BF3 and the what you get is 100 percent conversion into a product, 100 percent conversion into a product. Anybody can quickly tell me what is the structure of the product? Of, of, of course, the topic today is uh, furan synthesis. So, without uh, looking at I can simply write uh, this a furan, right? So, what next? So, 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 so uh, see, there are two possibilities. Whenever you uh, come across in the uh, alcohol um, ketones or aldehydes, you think about the alcohol condensation, etcetera. If you have a, uh, let us say epoxide and the presence of acid, all of us know epoxides are fairly stable in bases. Okay, in acid they are pretty sensitive. 
So, it can undergo ring opening. So, in the presence of uh, Lewis acid, let us say, if you have Lewis acid, all of us know uh, because of the methyl um, hyperconjugation inductive effect, this will undergo ring opening. So, if that is so, and uh, you will have a um, carbocation up here and OH, right? And what next? I think. So, once you have a carbocation, uh, what is the next possibility? See, basically, in organic chemistry, you have to identify the structural features that is important and which one is faster and which one is slower that is enough that means kinetics and the uh, thermodynamics. When I say which one is uh, so I know, uh, faster is the kinetics and then the uh, then of course, which one goes to the right uh, is the, uh, uh, driven by the thermodynamics. So, what next? So, if you have recognized the right structural features what is the next possible reaction by the way? Uh, no, no. So, okay, I will remind you, I will remind you the structural feature I can see it is a, uh, a carbonium ion containing an alpha hydroxy group. Where have you seen such a such an in such an intermediate? I am talking about only this portion, only this portion. Where have you seen? Uh, I am talking about a system like this, I think the way if I write this probably all of you would uh, very quickly remember. <laughs> see, see the same thing basically you have to identify that is it. That means, this hydrogen now will migrate eventually what you will be getting, you will be getting the ketone here. Now, all of you know that what is the structure, this is this that is it. So, you, what you get is essentially a 1 4 diketone and then of course, uh, you can make out you know what should be the structure uh, this is this uh, uh, this is now this aldehyde here. So, uh, in one position you will have this um, ethyl and the uh, three positions you will have the methyl group. So, one can, uh, one can quickly stop. Uh, go to the next one uh, next is uh, uh, Feist uh, Benari. Feist Benari. So, again uh, Feist, uh, Feist is actually well known for his dicarboxylic acid he has developed his, that is called cyclopropane 1 to dicarboxylic methylene cyclopropane 1 to dicarboxylic acid. But here he is known for the furan synthesis and what you have to know, you have to know the starting materials. So, previous were 1 for diketone and now uh, what you will see 1 3 diketo compound that means basically uh, ethyl acetoacetate or something methyl acetoacetate or something like this. In addition uh, what else you have to know? Uh, addition uh, what you have to know you have to know that is the other starting material. Alpha. Other starting materials is alpha haloketones uh, uh, or aldehydes uh, better I should say um, better I should say uh, alpha chloro alpha chloro. The reason being I will tell you uh, as you go on you will see uh, this reaction is very sensitive to uh, sensitive to conditions reaction conditions that means uh, sensitive to uh, 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 sensitive to uh, reaction conditions and the uh, nature of the uh, substrates, nature of the um, uh, substrates. Uh, we will give you uh, examples here, but what you have to note the reaction mechanism and uh, what I said also that chloro um, compounds, chloroacetones or chloroaldehydes. Okay. And uh, normal condition uh, in this case is a uh, base, and the base could be you know the simple amine or simple or uh, ammonia. Let us say in this case, uh, uh, if you use uh, uh, dilute ammonia, mind it, dilute ammonia. What is expected? Okay, dilute ammonia means it is just uh, enough of base to uh, scavenge HCl. So otherwise, it is basically a sodium hydroxide or base. Okay. Now, next thing that is important here in this reaction is to see there are two possibilities. Uh, one it can undergo aldol condensation and it can displace the uh, alpha halogen compounds. Between the two which one is more feasible? Especially when you have an aldehyde then the, 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 it is uh, more likely that this aldol condensation would be taking first. So, that means in this reaction 
uh, aldol is taking first. The aldol first, this is very important guidelines you have to do. If you do so, then what you will be getting? You will be getting once again, uh, this is OH here, then ester, methyl and this is Cl. Okay. Then, uh, then of course, uh, next thing that one can uh, guess that enolate would now displace this uh, chlorine and eventually uh, what you will be getting in hydroxyfuran, uh, hydroxyfuran and this, uh, this is the methyl group and then um, of course, uh, the finally aromatization uh, would give you the uh, furan derivative. So, this is important, I mean uh, this important that aldol is first because of two reasons. Chlorine is not that reactive as iodides or bromides, so lesser reactive of the so that is that is why the displacement of chlorine is not taking place first um, and of course, aldehyde is uh, pretty reactive. Now, if you take let us say uh, chloroacetones, alpha chloroacetones, alpha chloroacetones also that means it will have similar pattern, that means chlorine is not a very good living group, so it will have very similar reactions. Okay. Uh, like um, uh, recently uh, we did one reaction. <coughs> Uh, it is not, uh, we started from uh, acetone, this is one of the earliest reaction in fact, acetone dicarboxylate, dimethyl acetone dicarboxylate and uh, we used alpha chloroacetone and if you then mind it, this is very important. Uh, when I said that the reaction is uh, delicate to the reaction conditions, you have to mention here it is a dilute ammonia, dilute am ammonia and the product what you get uh, as usual aldol first then these and then uh, you have this compound ester here and then uh, one, one more ester. So, there are two more esters here. So, just like a uh, first particular first binary again uh, the aldol first and then condensation. Now, there are so many things to be learned. If you have for example, corresponding bromo this also would proceed but the yield would be, this uh, proceed to give the right product, but the yield will be pretty low. Uh, reason being of course, you know that now there is a competition between this aldol condensation and uh, displacement of the uh, corresponding bromine or, or you can say C alkylation. Uh, strangely, I think I do not know whether anybody can uh, give me the right answer. If you take uh, really concentrated ammonia means uh, the ammonia solution with pungent smell of ammonia what is the product that also have done in a very recently in last uh, one year. <coughs> yes, uh, what is the product well, it, it also gives an heterocycle pyrrole yes we did we did get this pyrrole uh, sorry. So, that is what I am telling this uh, basic uh, this first binary is a very sensitive um, reaction. Now, uh, I, when I said that it also sensitive to the nature of the substrates. So, uh, just if you uh, quick uh, if you just take uh, for example, um, I, I think I will for simplicity sake I will write E uh, as an ester and then uh, once again uh, alpha chloroacetone, alpha chloroacetone and uh, catalytic amount of potassium iodide then acetone and reflux, reflux. So, what, what do you, uh, what can you guess? What can you guess? What is the product? Product is C alkylation. Now, now, now you can change over to a separate kind of this uh, product by changing the reaction conditions. See all of us know if you have catalytic amount of potassium iodide, it uh, chloride is displaced, iodide is a better nucleophile. So, you get actually iodoacetone. So, once you have iodoacetone, so that would uh, displace this halogen. So, what you will be getting? You will be getting this one, this and then this one uh, then and this and ester right. So, that means the middle carbon would displace the um, chlorine or uh, in, in indirectly actually via the iodic iodogomous substituents. 
So, now what you get 1, 2, 3, 4. So, you have a 1, 4 diketone and if you um, heat it with oxalic acid, oxalic acid, so you will be getting the uh, 1, 4 again substituted furan here and the third position also is substituted by an ester. So, that means, that means that, uh, so this is a quite a versatile one. Uh, Polnor is a versatile one, also first one is also versatile one. There are two different things. Polnor can be, uh, you know, uh, varied by changing the substrate and also the mode of uh, different uh, different kinds of the substrate. Here also you have a different kind of substrate, but the but changing the reaction conditions, you can also get different kinds of the products. Okay, next thing that is third one, uh, starting from. Uh, alkyne precursors. Alkyne precursors, I think the first one I will talk about uh, developed by an Indian scientist uh, as Bangalore, Professor Sri Krishna and it is a uh, from um, alkyne precursors. What he has done? He has taken a uh, a propagylic alcohol and you see the, the, the reactions are pretty simple though except one, uh, one chemical. Then ethyl vinyl ether is also readily available. Then what he has done? He has uh, used NBS. So, uh, he has obtained a product here and this is then reacted with uh, sodium uh, cyanoborohydride, sodium cyanoborohydride and tributyl tin chloride. Tributyl tin chloride. I think by, by now all of you know uh, the uh, nature of the reagents. And then next thing is paratoluene sulfonic acid. It is a basically three step sequence. Three steps it is not unlike the previous ones. The previous ones was the one step sequence, right. And um, what, what is expected here? What is expected? You see, Guess at least uh, we should be able to predict the structure of A. Structure of A, then uh, I think next is quite easy though. The first one, what, what is the what is the product? Okay, uh, this portion remains as it is. See, NBS actually is equivalent to bromonium ion. Right. So, that means it, and all of us know because of this lone pair effect, this uh, beta carbon is uh, more uh, nucleophilic. So, you have the bromine and then this would be plus and this plus is now captured by alcohol. Right. So, what next? All of us know. So, this sodium cyanoborohydride and that is a butyl tin chloride is equivalent to is equivalent to tributyl tin hydride. And all of us know that tributyl tin hydride uh, reacts with alkyl halides or especially bromo compounds to generate the corresponding carbon radical. So, once you have this carbon radical, then uh, you can see that means this is equivalent to now. So, this co gets converted into the uh, radical here. And this this one, and once you have a radical, radical undergoes uh, radical cyclization and exocyclization. So uh, this is a pretty easy one. And what will now we will be getting this. Uh, this is of course uh, this and OME. Uh, sorry, OAT, OAT. Now once you have this. Then of course, uh, all of us know the I would say ethoxy here and thus undergo acid catalyzed um, ethanol eliminations and then subsequent isomerization eventually what you will be getting? You will be getting the uh, furan. So, uh, 3 substituted furan, 3 substituted furan. It is a nice way of getting it. Only uh, drawback of this method is that this requires little uh, tertiary metal tin hydrides. Okay. So, that, that is the only uh, drawback, but uh, pretty useful to make uh, 3 substituted furan because many of you probably uh, do not know 3 substituted furans are plenty in the natural products, plenty as the natural, uh, among the natural products. Okay. And um, 
there is one more area uh, uh, which can be obtained from um, sulfur elides again it's a beta keto ester in this case now the uh, other substrate is basically this one so in the previous case it was also an uh, propargylic alcohol but that was that was an that's ether but in this case it's an ester here and the other uh, unique feature, structural feature is it is a sulfur elide it's a sulfur elide so sulfur elide means all of us know this the metal carbon would be negative and the sulfur would be positive and uh, only uh, with a catalytic amount of triphenyl phosphine solubilized oras chloride right oras chloride uh, in the presence of uh, silver uh, say hexafluor antimonates okay uh, this is only 10 mole percent so, uh, what you can expect? You can expect a reaction, right? Right? What is the reaction? This is uh, so. Uh, if you just rewrite the structure here, this is um, ester here, right? This is minus, and this is. I think I'll not write this. Uh, Phenyl maybe this is plus. Now what is expected? The, all of us know. What is the next step? Next step is basically this um, the gold. Gold has a uh, uh, tendency to activate the triple bond. That's it. So if that means uh, this is uh, gold is uh, this this is one, right? And then we'll have these <coughs> five uh, exocyclization exocyclization and uh, this is now this will go to what uh, this is a ketone uh, now this is double bond now let us say we will have this gold now here and uh, the ketone here and then you have here what do you have here is the uh, sulfur right this is plus now uh, sulfur plus now uh, what next one two three four five so what do you see here the, the, that means uh, this one would undergo again five endo then it recyclizes and uh, this, this, this now the sulfur, uh, sulfide portion comes out, sulfide portion comes out and uh, what you will be getting? You will be getting a lactone now, right? double bond, now oxygen here, then this is uh, uh, normally uh, you put a ligand here, this, right? What next? Then of course, I think uh, this is basically uh, isomerization and isomerization uh, it will give you uh, ketone this is uh, this portion is lactone here and this is now this and you have this okay so once you have this and then of course uh, did uh, after the reaction uh, work up so what you will be getting you will be getting a furano kind of a lactone furano kind of a lactone and uh, in this case you will have a methyl group here at the alpha position of this uh, furan nucleus. So, uh, essentially uh, if you look at it is nothing but it means all these things that one three diketone portion is there inside and then and this portion if you uh, see here it is an hydroxy propargylic alcohol. What does it mean? It is equivalent to actually chloroacetone. 
all of us know acetone is equivalent to L corresponding acetone. If you just hydrolyze it uh, with mercury sulfate that gives you acetone and in the place of chlorine what you have is hydroxy. So, uh, throughout uh, the rest of the examples you will see the all these alkyne precursors are equivalent to basically alpha chloro acetones etcetera. Okay. And um, so, I think, you know, I think we will stop here. Uh, next probably most useful reaction I think I am skipping some of the things because of the uh, time limit. So, what I will do I will just give you one more or two more examples uh, from the um, alkynes portion uh, sorry aline uh, substrates and uh, this is uh, the, the next one that is the fourth one is from alines and so uh, the reaction here uh, requires an aline substrate, aline substrate of this kind, aline substrate of this kind, I mean basically the ketones, alinic ketones. And I, I, I should mention that this is this reaction is due to a well known scientist name as James A. Marshall. And in one one part if you have the right substrate in one pot, you can get a tri substituted furan without much difficulty it's, and the reaction is a quite general reaction and the reaction condition surprisingly is very, very mild. What you have to do uh, and it is a very common chemical though this reaction was uh, discovered in around 1990. 1990. So, only thing what you have to you have to basically figure out the what could be the catalyst. What could be the catalyst? Uh, see, basically, uh, as a chemist, one can quickly come up with the suggestion of the catalyst. When you uh, look for the catalyst, go to the periodic table and see. Basically, you need to activate either the carbonyl or the or the triple bond, or the triple bond, right? Uh, the triple bond. In this case, uh, it is aline. Aline is essentially equivalent to a triple bond. So, in previous example we have used this uh, gold in this case uh, the cheaper than gold is silver. So, uh, he used silver nitrate and, and, of, and one of the cheapest solvent of course, uh, acetone and one more and cheapest base let us say cheapest base uh, I thought huh? no even cheaper cheaper inorganic bases inorganic base cheaper than that huh? right uh, very very good calcium carbonate calcium carbonate just reflux uh, no so sorry not reflux in this case just room temperature is not it good uh, well ok we will see more example probably uh, so this um, some people have used the um, uh, so called uh, Wilkinson catalyst also like that um, uh, rhodium chloride uh, can be used triphenyl phosphate rhodium chloride also can be used um, uh, or even uh, more expensive tetrafluoro uh, 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 silver borate also can be used, but uh, this is a very general one. And of course, um, mechanistically, mechanistically one can think about that between the two double bonds of the alines one of the uh, one of them is close to the or closer to the carbonyl group. So, uh, this would that means the uh, remote carb, uh, double bond would be activated. Now, you see although it is quite far from each uh, far from this place, but this oxygen is so reactive now or this or the or this double bond is so reactive. Now, you will see get 5 endo ring closure. See this is something unique in the, especially in furan chemistry. Furan chemistry there are I have many more examples where you will see that 5 endo cyclizations are pretty favored. Okay. And then you can go on writing this mechanism, okay. uh, writing this mechanism here. So, you will have oxo and this thing that thing then eventually uh, it will undergo this one. Now, the same reaction, the same reaction let us say uh, if you <coughs> take a substrate of this kind R 3 and then R 1, R 2. And now, 
use a 5 percent palladium uh, tetrakis uh, triphenyl phosphine palladium okay. and 10 mole percent 10 mole percent uh, silver carbonate silver carbonate sorry I think I made a mistake somewhere all oh, okay. oh, right sorry here this is a carbonyl here and this carbonyl group and this is R 1 then in addition in addition what you take you take one more uh, substrate that is R 4 alkyl halide R 4 alkyl halide. So, what can you guess? So, it is a combination of now a sort of uh, sort of uh, Heck reaction and this Marshall reaction. So, that means uh, all of us know uh, if with, the, uh, with the presence with the use of palladium 0. So, palladium 0 would undergo insertion here. So, R that means it will be converted to R 4 uh, palladium and all of us know this palladium then undergoes addition to the double bond and uh, only available double bond is here which one this one this is also a alpha beta unsaturated system you can see if you look at this portion it is like alpha beta unsaturated and this position also is vacant. So, R 4 will und uh, undergoes insertion here right. So, addition then, then the, and the palladium would be uh, transferred to oxygen and then uh, uh, all the same old cyclizations. So, eventually what you will find you will find a, a, a substituted tetra substituted furan uh, with all kinds of the groups in different places in different places. So, in other words the reaction is uh, very versatile reaction very versatile reaction one can be and uh, okay. and uh, how do you get to the substrate though. How do you get to the substrate? Alinyl ketone. I think I, I think I will give you just only one example. Mm, uh, so alinyl ketones can be made. Alinyl uh, ketone can be ketones can be made from uh, a simple starting material like say uh, aldehyde. Uh, then uh, corresponding uh, lithio acetylides. Acetylides. So, um, all of us know that this will be just simply uh, kind of a um, addition reaction, a addition reaction, right. Now, uh, this is reacted with uh, sodium hydride and chloroacetic acid. I think uh, all of us know what will happen sodium hydride and chloroacetic acid, it will undergo Williamson ether synthesis, right. Williamson ether synthesis. So, it will have then oxygen here, then this is CH2, and then this is the carboxylic acid. So, now this is uh, so basically these are all standard protocol. This is Gignard type of addition, then uh, this Williamson. And then the next thing that it is often not used, but it is a very versatile reaction. And so, what you get here uh, LDA, LDA the, you get a rearrangement. Uh, this is what you have to find out. What is this rearrangement? Can you guess what is the rearrangement? LDA, LDA is of course, uh, you, because you have a carboxylic acid here, you require more than uh, 2 equivalents, more than 2 equivalents. Okay. Uh, can you think of a reaction here? This is a very uncommon reaction, but often very useful reaction though. Can you guess? Anybody can guess? Okay, I will write the product, uh, you just uh, tell me the reaction. What is the reaction? Right, 2 3 sigma tropic rearrangements. So, this is actually uh, 2 3 uh, sigma tropic rearrangement. Tropic rearrangement. Okay. Uh, so, 
what happens it forms the anion here then another another anion here and uh, this anion actually so uh, if you have anion here and anion here this anion then is uh, my uh, just sn2 prime type sub, uh, substitution reactions and opens up this ether unit okay so you have this then if you put uh, uh, if uh, sorry if you use uh, diazomethane and then and of course uh, all kinds of uh, oxidation in this case uh, this uh, authors have used uh, Desmartin oxidation. Desmartin oxidation, you get the uh, origin, the, the substrate that alanyl ketones. This is one of these ways to, uh, one can make. Uh, okay, and so that means essentially you have talked about all these uh, methods. And then let us uh, look at a few uh, so, uh, useful but uh, not very general methods. Uh, like say um, uh, the one I'll give you here. Uh, has been used in my lab. Uh, it's a starting material uh, of this kind, acetone, and then for acetone, uh, it's a formyl acetone, you can say, and, uh, and then you have this corresponding dimethyl ketal, dimethyl acetal, and treat with. methyl chloroacetate in the presence of uh, sodium methoxide because you have methyl, methyl ether so you often use methyl ether. So, this is uh, this comes in under the category of miscellaneous, miscellaneous uh, methods. I think all of us know what is the uh, next possible uh, reaction. If you say what is the possible structure? No, what is the name of the reaction? I want the name of the reaction. Well, ketals or hemiacetals they are pretty stable, so I can just uh, keep them intact. Dargen glycidic uh, okay, condensation. So ester condensation. So what you will find, uh, you will get this. Sorry. Uh, epoxide right and this should be the CO2 that is uh, quite uh, expected not that uh, great. Now, if you heat it uh, I do not remember the solvent used but at 160 degree uh, you get uh, something very unique. Uh, okay. The uh, no where the mechanism has been described. Maybe in the original article, uh, I don't know, but uh, but I have a mechanism. Probably that should be acceptable. Uh, straight away, get the furan. Straight away, get the furan. Okay. So wh what what could be the mechanism? What could be the mechanism? Tell me. That means we 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 have a, uh, we have only heat, right? So that means elimination, some some sort of elimination of small molecule. May be, okay. So what what is the possible elimination would be loss of methanol. So loss of if you uh, think about the loss of methanol, that means uh, let us say if uh, one methanol um, goes out, so what you will be getting? You will be getting this kind of thing right. So, in all kind of ether, in all ether. What next? I think uh, if you remember I have been proposing one uh, unique reactions 1, 3 sigma tropic shift which is not thermally allowed, but apparently it is happening. You see here, uh, if you uh, do this and so what you will find? You will find uh, this portion, then you have this ester up here, then oxygen, this, and you have this methoxy, right, and the double bond, and the double bond. Now, once you have this, then of course one can think of another loss of methanol, and uh, so you'll eventually get to this product. This is a very unique reaction, 
Well, and pretty easy to, as you can see in two steps, uh, no uh, just uh, except sodium methoxide which is very readily available sodium methanol and one can get a nice well defined uh, furan compound, well defined furan compound. Okay. And maybe I will give you one more, uh, uh, because uh, one more example uh, of a furan synthesis and like uh, if you are to ask to make a compound of this kind, this uh, uh, three substituted furan is very difficult to make, Re region being all of us know, right. The readily available starting materials, what could be the readily available starting material? Furfural. Where do you get the furfural from? Uh, Aldopentose, uh? pentose sugar, pentose ends. Just a, 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 so that means one of these. Otherwise, like say uh, if you take uh, sucrose or cane sugar and heat it with uh, acid, what do you get? Cane sugar. Cane sugar, sucrose, even fructose, let us say. That means hexose sugar. For pentose sugar gives the furfural. Hexose sugar, what does it give? Hmm? Oh, of course, aldehyde. But you, you have to have one more carbon. No. Aldehyde is at two position. See, pentose sugar gives furfural. That means that is two substituted. Then hexose sugar should give actually five hydroxymethyl. File hydroxymethyl furfural. What I am trying to say that getting into this or getting to this five substituted furan derivative is very easy. Two substituted is very easy, but uh, if you want to make a three substituted furan, it is very difficult to make. If you can come up with this, like uh, Sri Krishna has made three substituted furan, but he, his method is uh, having a problem of use, uh, use of uh, tertiary tin hydride. If you can come up with a better solution, that would be nice. Okay. So, the, the way uh, most people uh, solve this sort of problem, uh, they uh, use uh, again an indirect way of uh, making this um, oxazole. Uh, like say, if you start with uh, oxazole and then uh, this uh, tin derivative is easy to make, once again tin and uh, just uh, heat it, nothing else. Only thing that is substance are little expensive. This one uh, is not that expensive though, we will talk about in the next class. The next class we will talk about a uh, little bit of it. Okay. So, uh, what is the product? I think one of you can guess, the, it gives you, it, uh, so, sorry, double bond. Right. What next? So, what you will be getting is you will be getting three substituted tin derivative, three substituted tin derivative. Okay. So, this is uh, the means it's a um, dill solder and retro dill solder technology and this has been used for uh, synthesizing many complex molecules. So, uh, maybe we, we can skip them and there are other ways to uh, also um, uh, get to the uh, furan compounds. Uh, let us see, uh, let us see maybe um, you can work on this one uh, at home. I will give you one more example so, uh, under the miscellaneous category. Let us say apparently it looks to be pretty simple though. But uh, often we do not uh, think about this kind of reaction you know, like this one for example. Then this one if you see acetylene is actually linear, this oxygen is quite far from each other, uh, far from this acetylene and this. And, but if you react to it uh, iodine and sodium carbonate bicarbonate and in uh, acetonitrile solvent. So, what would be the product? Right? And many of us know the, uh, the set of the reagent. What is the reagent used for? Huh? Close, right. It is a standard protocol for iodo lactonizations. But in this case, you do not have the uh, carboxylic acid. But uh, what you will be getting in, uh, I mean, very rapidly, 
uh, you will be getting this corresponding uh, iodo compound or iodo compound. I mean apparently this is acetylene you know it is quite a linear kind of structure, but still uh, it is so reactive that means the reactivity actually uh, overrides the um, uh, distance. So, uh, eventually it gives this uh, furan derivative. Okay. So, uh, homework I think only who has submitted homework last time homework last week's homework I, I, I have seen Partho, Somabrato, Orgho, Sagar yes, uh, Vasudevan yes, but uh, only but not many though. Okay, let us I uh, will give you one more and see um, I will uh, whether you can come up with okay. this would give you the one uh, the one I am giving you now. is a uh, fused furan ring system, fused furan ring system. Do you know the answer? Okay. And see whether you can, you, you can work it out and uh, I can give you the hints. Uh, the hin hints is it goes through intermediate. That much I can tell you. Okay. So, in summary, what, what we have done? Uh, that means the Paul Nor furan synthesis even today is useful. Fist Venari also useful. Only thing that there are several variants of these methods. It's, and the, the next most important and the other modern methods involve the utilization of alkynes and alenes. And then the Marshall um, furan synthesis was quite versatile. And then you have other things, okay, um, uh, uh, other uh, miscellaneous methods. So among the miscellaneous, what are the methods um, useful? Iodo etherification could be one of them, right? Then uh, glycinic ester condensation, and um, probably the last one is diel solder and electrodiel solder, okay, of the isooxazoles, isooxazoles. 